Now in the US, President Biden's administration hopes to use a gathering of 50 African delegations in Washington to uplift and empower African institutions, citizens and nations. Participants in the US Africa Leaders Summit will spend three days in Washington discussing the challenges, needs and hopes of one fifth of the world's population. This year's summit, which begins tomorrow, will focus on deepening and expanding the long-term US-Africa partnership. Well, for more on this, uh, let's speak with Arise correspondent Adesua Omoruan, who joins us from Washington, D.C. Good to see you, Adesua. So what's on the agenda? I understand there'll be lots of focus on good governance and other so-called deliverables. Indeed, Charles. Welcome to the political capital of the United States. Yes, uh, a lot of uh, conversations are expected on trade, investment, the economy, uh, climate change, good governance and democracy. But we also expect to hear, Charles, those tough conversations, especially with climate change. At the just concluded climate summit, we had the African dele delegation uh, talk tough. They, they were vocal about how developed countries need to pay appropriately to developing countries and implement climate uh, change agreement. We also heard them talk tough about how they need to balance uh, development and the, uh, the transition to green energy. Yes, the race to a net zero uh, world is on, but is it just for Africa and how do they, you know, transition that just energy? That's something President Muhammadu Buhari will be talking about. We've seen how Africa has and continue to reels, you know, uh, from the devastating and catastrophic effect of climate change, especially in Nigeria. We just witnessed some of the worst floodings in a decade, killing over uh, 600 people, displacing many thousands of them and destroying farmland. So. We would hear those conversations. Charles, I can tell you there will be other tough conversations around, for instance, Africa stands when it comes to the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, you recall how Africa, some African countries voted during the United Nations Security Council and the General Assembly. The U.S. might be trying to bring that up. It is a summit to help the U.S., you know, uh, foster good relationship with the continent. But we also know that there's a lot of geopolitics around all of this, even though in the documents we have seen, in the statements we have heard from U.S. government, uh, government officials to the build of, the, of this summit, they do not want to mention China. They say it's not about countering China. It's not about Africa choosing and not making Africa the pawn in that Cold War, uh, especially with China and Russia. But we do know, uh, some observers do say, that that geopolitics may just be forcing the likes of the United States to hold this summit, Charles. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting that you mentioned China because I was just about to ask you that because, I mean, China, I mean, that's hovering rather menacingly in the background of this summit. Um, and, of course, uh, you know, amid Washington's growing concern about the clout of China and Russia in Africa. But you also talked, uh, Adesua, of uh, President Buhari, who is, of course, in attendance there in Washington. Tell us a bit more about what Nigeria is looking for out of the summit. Yes, thank you, Charles. President Muhammad Buhari arrived in Washington yesterday at the Joint Base Andrews, uh, uh, of course, six, at about 6.45 p.m. local time. We were there. Uh, we saw the president descend back from his plane to meet with uh, the waiting entourage here. He's one of the African presidents who have the real opportunity to speak uh, at, some of the, uh, at the summit on some of the themes and sub-themes of the summit. It's going to be a very busy day. Next uh, three days will be very busy for the African uh, leaders and heads of government that are here. President Mohamed Bari will also be speaking at other uh, side events. The, the second day of the summit, Charles, is dedicated to business. There's going to be a lot of business talks. As you know, uh, 
the United States trades with Africa on two different fronts. Uh, they are Goa with, uh, so, uh, with Sub-Saharan Africa and of course uh, the general, generalized systems when it comes to some countries in North Africa. We have seen a decline in trade under the Goa, uh, especially because of the oil component. When you remove the oil and gas because of the escalation of the shale uh, production here in the U.S., uh, the U.S. doesn't seem interested in the oil coming from Africa anymore. It will also be an opportunity for Africa to persuade the United States when it comes to, of course, trading multilaterally with the AFCFTA in its second phase of implementation, although Nigeria was uh, sort of sluggish to sign on to that agreement, but it eventually did. It is said that when Nigeria sneezes, Africa catches cold. Of course, its geographic size, its population size, and it, its economic strength does put it in good stead. And President Muhammad Buhari is here. Many will say to play that leadership role for Africa, We'll be listening to him uh, at the Just Energy Transition uh, session, which is on the first day of the summit, is the seventh session, and he will be speaking. He will also be speaking during uh, some business forums on the second day, and we are told he also has an engagement on international peace, because the summit, again, is about trade, economy, investment, infrastructure, peace and security, democracy, and good governance, Charles. And uh, Adesua, we've got about a minute or so left. I mean, this is not the first US-Africa summit. Is there a way of gauging what's been achieved in the past and what can be built upon? So this does not turn out to be just another talking shop. Indeed, uh, Charles, some skeptics say this is another Photoshop. Uh, it's, a, it's a way for developed countries to keep the dependency syndrome on Africa. But again, the language to the build-up of this summit, Charles, has been very cordial. We see documents, we hear government officials speak, and they say they refer to Africa as partners. I think the summit in itself is an actualization and an acknowledgement by the U.S. that you know, African countries or the African continent is not coming to Washington for aid, even though some skeptics say the fact that uh, an entire continent is invited to the U.S. tough to talk about shared uh, prosperity does smack of uh, some, some level of, uh, you know, belittling. But anyways, the summit is here, Charles. It's difficult to say what the summit will achieve. Uh, but again, those tough conversations, those real conversations will be heard. Uh, Africa does have the population, uh, at least 1.3 billion people, 55 countries, a joint GDP of $3.4 trillion. Uh, the AFCFTA is the largest single market. It cannot be ignored. And the likes of the U.S. do understand that. There's an emerging uh, continent, there's an emerging uh, new world order, and and the United States wants a piece of that. So this is an opportunity, not just for Africa, but also for the US to determine the kind of partnership they want to have, a partnership where everybody is expected to benefit. Charles. Adesua, thank you very much indeed. And I'm sure we'll be speaking to you again as the uh, conference uh, gets underway. Adesua Omoruan is a RISE correspondent as she was talking to me there from Washington.